New York community is largely an apartment lender in the New York City area, rent controlled, rent stabilized apartments. So those buildings are uh, affected by recent New York rent rules that uh, cap how much um, you can charge to your 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 tenants. On top of that, you have higher interest rates, so it squeezes um, the, the landlords, and there's a lot of refinancing risk ahead. So they posted a big loss there in, in the fourth quarter, and there's questions ahead. They have about 4% of their loans at office exposure, so that's a bit a touch higher than, than the median in our coverage universe. So there there are some credit quality concerns ahead and they, they built their reserves pretty much in line with peers uh, in the fourth quarter to, to um, address that. I'm looking at the uh, Spider S&P Regional Banking ETF. KRE is the ticker. It's off 3.45% today on this news, presumably. How much is this a New York Community Bank problem versus mm. maybe a, a wider regional bank problem. Yeah, so New York Community is really the last of the larger regional banks to report their fourth quarter earnings. And pretty much across the board of their their larger peers, everybody is actually pretty um, sanguine about 2024 credit quality. So this seems more of a New York Community specific issue of needing to shore up their balance sheet and, and facing you know, a, a blip on their credit quality that they need to, you know, and still some more confidence in the market uh, ahead. Do you think someone's going to ask a question to Powell about this today? Or do the reporters <laughs> already have their questions planned out? No, that before? would be a good one because it's <laughs> certainly topical. Yeah, I mean, what would the Fed, how would how would you expect Jerome Powell to react to a, a question on, like, it, does this signal more weakness? Yeah, I, I'd assume he would say something to the effect that the banking industry is resilient and you've seen stability in deposits and and strong credit quality for the industry. You know, New York community specifically ha, had an issue with the fourth quarter. But I would say overall, the, 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 the banking sector has been really strong and resilient ever since that March and April you know, turmoil and stabilized deposits, increased their capital. Uh, the larger ones are, are shoring up um, capital and liquidity ahead of tougher rules. So it, it makes for a much sound and safer uh, system. So where are we? Like, how would you characterize the industry in terms of getting to where it needs to be in terms of their balance sheets, their credit quality? Mm -hmm. You know, because it was such a shock, I guess, a year ago when we had some of those regional banks uh, kind of hit. Yeah. Um, so... Ever since that March uh, and April time frame, a lot of the banks have been defensive in nature. They've pulled back on lending. They've you know, exited some loan portfolios, exited relationships that weren't profitable. Um, just been very conservative with how they lend and how they operate. So they've had three quarters of of conservatism that they've built up, uh, built up their reserves. So they've done a very good job of addressing some of these issues. And after, aside from what's happening today with New York community, I, I think the market's been pretty uh, receptive to the actions that the bank management teams have done over the course of the past three quarters. And where are we in just in terms of, you know, kind of, I don't know, kind of repairing the earnings capability mm -hmm. of these banks, because that's kind of what you told us yeah. all along, that this was going to be more of a, a challenge from the earnings power of these regional banks as they deal with higher rates and so on and so right. forth. So we're getting towards sort of the end of of the weakness in, in the top line. Um, the, the pause in rate hikes um, last year has helped shore up the, the, the pace of deposit repricing. So the margins, the net interest margins for the banks are starting to stabilize a bit. And we're hoping that once rate cuts start uh, materializing, uh, the industry in the back half of the year expecting a resurgence in lending and improving uh, top line performance and improving earnings. But really all of this is predicated on if, if we get the rate cuts and if we get a soft landing. How are investors supposed to be thinking about the dividend cut mm -hmm. for New York Community Bank slashing the payout to shareholders mm -hmm. to five cents um, from an expected 17 uh, cents? Yes. So that's that's an interesting thing because New York Community has historically prided themselves on having a strong dividend, um, had a lot of uh, 
insider ownership of the bank. And so the dividend was very key to, to them and to their shareholders. They, they do skew a little bit historically to a retail investor base as well. So this was a decision that the, the CEO said they didn't take lightly. Um, and it was more of another step to build capital ahead of um, near the tougher regulations. They're pointing to a CET1 ratio of 10% versus the current 9.2%. So earnings uh, generation and the slashing of the dividend could help them get there by the end of next year.